Hi, this is Seth David for the Sleeter Group, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about why most CPAs lose their clients from where I sit. Microsoft Excel is possibly the most important small business productivity tool, in my opinion. The reason why, in my experience, a lot of people, a lot of CPAs lose their clients, and I'm only saying this from my direct experience, when new clients come into my door, and they start asking me about helping them find somebody else to do their taxes or ask me if I can get their taxes done. I'll always ask them what's wrong with your current provider, your current CPA or enrolled agent or whomever's doing your taxes. And the one answer that I get most often, most consistently, is some version of they're not providing me with any guidance. Now I know you probably have engagement letters that spell it out very clearly that all you're doing is preparing their tax returns. But I can tell you from these kinds of experiences that I have with clients walking in my door, they don't care what it says in your engagement letter. What they care about is what they're getting at the end of the day in exchange for that bill of yours that they're paying. And usually they're getting one big bill for one lump sum all up front because you're billing them for the tax return. The perceived value is not there though they're starting to think, well, why can't I just go to H&R Block or why can't I go to an enrolled agent? Why am I paying extra for a CPA as opposed to an enrolled agent? Enrolled agents know taxes. That's all they do is taxes. CPAs, in fact, may be more spread out. They may be doing lots of things, right? So there's any number of arguments that your competition can be making for why somebody should switch to them and leave you. And I always try and think about this stuff. And I, anytime I've lost a client, I always think, what could I have done differently to keep them? And I think that what could go a really long way to helping you get and keep many more of your clients is to provide them with a little something extra. You're the one who's prepared their tax return. You've gone through their books. You've gotten them ready to prepare that tax return. You've, you've had to satisfy yourself at least somewhat that they are accurate enough for you to feel confident signing off on that return. What that means is you've also, at least to some extent, assured yourself that the information in, let's say, their QuickBooks file is accurate enough for you to rely on it enough to do a tax return, which means you now have at your disposal information, uh, lots of information that can easily be extracted without putting in a whole lot of extra effort. And it will dramatically increase the perceived value of the services that you're offering. And I can assure you clients will be much less inclined to want to leave you if they're getting this stuff from you, if you're going that extra mile. And you don't have to go that much further. Let me explain. Let's go over to a, a sample QuickBooks file. And now that you've assured yourself that let's say income is accurate enough for you to put that number on the tax return, then a simple report like sales by customer and let's do a sales by customer summary and let's do it for last fiscal year and let's total this by month already you're seeing where you can get very meaningful information but here's where Excel comes in you can do so much in QuickBooks and you can analyze this and you can write notes but if you go to Excel you can do a lot better analysis in my opinion so let's go to Excel let's create a new worksheet and some very simple things I want to look at that I can show you in just a few minutes in a free screencast. So QuickBooks is doing its thing. Here comes my Excel file. I forgot to change some of the options, so I'm going to do it again. This is where my uh, anal retentiveness kicks in. In Excel, the first time I'm in a company file, I like to set these options here. First of all, <coughs> um, keep my fonts. I don't like the space between the columns. In fact, I hate the space between the columns. I don't really need the grid lines. And I like the headers on the printed report and the screen. So I know what I'm looking at while I'm looking at it on screen. Those are just some of my personal preferences. Okay, so now we're in a couple of quick formatting things. Page layout. Let's go to one page wide. It gets rid of those dotted lines. The page break where it breaks off is just fine. But now I want to get some ideas here. So what do I want to do? The first thing I want to do actually is I want to flatten out these customers name because you see how it has the customer and then within that it's got the jobs. Well, just a quick copy and paste down here and let me widen up these columns so it's very clear to see what's where. And I'm also going to get rid of my totals and my descriptions. I really just want at the end I want one column with all my customers. So I'm going to add in another column here and for that matter at this point let's remove the split we can put it back in just freeze the rows above 
Okay, all of these are standalones. That's fine. And I'm doing this manually because there's not that many. If there were a lot, in a future screencast, I'll show you how to record a quick macro that will do this all for you. Get rid of that. And all I'm doing is, you know, finding the ones that have uh, jobs within the customer, copy, paste down, go back up to the sort of parent level, shift spacebar highlights the whole row, control minus deletes the whole row, down to where the total is, again, shift spacebar to highlight the whole row, control minus to delete the whole row. And let's get rid of the total that came from Excel. We're going to put all that stuff back in, but we're going to do it through Excel rather than through here. Looks like this one is a standalone. Another standalone. So I'm just verifying everything. So now, for the standalones, I'm just going to set it equal to what's in column C, but then I'm going to concatenate the ones that had jobs within them. So what happens is when you export from QuickBooks or many databases for that matter, the columns come in formatted as just generic text. That's why when I put in the formula equals C5, instead of seeing the result, you're seeing the formula. Quick way to fix that. Highlight the column. Alt D is in data. E is in Edward. That gets you your text to columns dialog. I can do a fix width here. Next. It doesn't matter. I just want to divide it somewhere that's not going to cut that off. Next, over here, do not import, right? I'm keeping just the original column, do not import, finish, and that kind of resets the formatting. I could also go home and do clear all formats, but I've found that that doesn't always work as well as this does. I wind up having to do it again sometimes when I do it that way. So now I can copy these down, but here's one that's got jobs. So here we say concatenate that comma quote colon quote comma that and I do the colon like that so that and again it's it's uh, it's still doing it to me so we'll have to fix that it's doing it because I didn't get to copy this one down when I copy from here it should keep it but I'm doing that because I if, if ever I want this to be able to speak to QuickBooks in any way then this is the way that QuickBooks lays it out is you have the parent and the colon and the sub <laughs> if you ever notice when you're entering a transaction, that's how QuickBooks has it all laid out. So now let's go to all the ones that have uh, jobs. We're basically looking for where I see uh, a name repeated in column B. And that looks like that's about it. Just kind of visually double checking here. Okay, so all the other ones we can do just like so. The other thing is because it had sort of uh, you know its own formatting from QuickBooks, <coughs> the uh, parent level accounts, the row heights come in a little wider. You can highlight the whole spreadsheet by clicking up here in the top leftmost corner, or Control A. And then if you notice when you move your mouse over the bottom extreme of any row, it changes its shape. When you see that different shape, double click and it will automatically adjust all the row heights so that they're uniform. Just these little sort of anal formatting things I do. Okay, so now we have the customer. We can even call a customer job to be very specific and accurate. I can get rid of columns B and C now. Oops, first I have to harden these formulas. And by that I mean, right now these are all formulas. I want to convert the formulas into values. So Control C, uh, Edit Paste Special, Alt E, and the letter S. E is in Edward, S is in Special. That brings up my Paste Special dialog. And I just want to paste the values right back onto the cells themselves. That replaces the formula with each formula's result. So now I have just hard-coded data in column D. Now I can delete columns B and C. God, I work hard. Okay, now before I lose anything, 
this would be a good time to pause and save. Sample customer analysis. All right, save that. Now let's make her look pretty. <clears throat> so I highlight the whole sheet. I want to kind of pick my standard. First of all, let's get rid of all the borders. I want to start over and I want to apply my own formatting. I'm very arrogant that way. So let's make everything blue background, white text, and then I can start playing to make this look pretty. So one thing I like to do, control the number one gives me my format cells. And it brings over, for some reason on my big monitor when I do that, it brings it over to the other screen. So the other way to do that is to come over here under font and this little down pointing right arrow doohickey thing. Click that, it brings up your format cells dialog. In the fill, I wanna go to fill effects. I've got my two colors. Right, I can even stick with this default, maybe make that the nice dark blue, maybe a little lighter. Okay, okay. Then these fonts can become a little dark blue. And sometimes people say, Seth, why is this important? And the answer, very simply put, in my opinion, is that it makes the reports easier to read, more engaging to the eye, especially if I'm going to present this to somebody. So again, let's go to the fill, fill effects. Let's go with this one here and a darker one here. Let's see what that looks like. A little better maybe. Now we can make the fonts white. Just something that makes it stand out nicely. Now the next thing, control shift down arrow, shift right arrow to highlight the range. Then I can take this one section in here <clears throat> and say, let's do no fill back to the dark blue fonts. And let's turn my grid lines on. And now I've got something that looks kind of nice and easy to read. So we spent a bit of time on that, but look at the result. It makes it very easy to read. Now let me total. First of all, I want a customer count, right? So number of customers. And what I really want specifically is I want the number of customers that have a charge in any given month because that's what I want to see as one little sort of metric is what, what on average is the number of customers I'm serving each month, right? So I want to say equals count if. Okay, so that counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition. So count if the range is going to be everything above it, right? Control shift in the up arrow lets me highlight that range very quickly. Then I hit a comma, not equal to zero. And I think this is gonna fail initially. And I'm trying to remember, it's been a little while. Yes, so I have to put it in quotes. When I'm using a not equal to designation, got to be in quotes. Now let's test this and make sure it actually did it, its job right. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ah, because I included this in the range. And this was not equal to zero. So you got to be careful about that. So let's fix the range to only go to 33. So now I can see within each month how many customers I've served, okay? Total revenue. Let's sum that up. Thirty-seven four twenty-three eighty-six. Just highlighting, I'm just double checking my math here. 37, 4, 23, 86, that's right. Average monthly revenue per customer equals total revenue divided by the number of customers. <laughs> Let's take an average of the number of customers against the total equals average 
and just highlight the range. Very easy formula. Okay, so let's get an idea of the overall annual average. So on average, the number of customers I served per month were five. Okay, now to be fair about this, this needs to be compared with the average monthly sales. So let's get that going. Let's say, and I'm just doing this quick pro quo. What I'd really probably should do is insert a column here <coughs> and figure the average. So let's leave that alone for now. We'll come back to that actually. But here's what I'm able to start putting together and showing my clients is I can say, look, here's what you're doing on average. During the year, here's what you did. You, you, know, you can look at the cycles and see how they cycled up in sales. February was, it looks like, the best month they had. April was another good month. But you can sit down with the clients. And I understand that you have to be careful about what you deliver to your client, especially as a CPA. But what I think you can do is without necessarily delivering this to your client, having done the analysis, you can certainly sit down with them and show it to them. The client's probably not initially going to appreciate what it all says anyway. The point is for you to do the analysis, for you to come up with what it says about the company, and then feed that information back to the client, even if it's just giving them some food for thought. Even if it's just saying to them, hey, why did you do so much better in February and April than the rest of the year? Why were these months so good? What did you do? right and where did it all come from it looks like we had one new client where we did a lot of work up front and then we got a good residual recurring monthly revenue base from that client what did you do here how can we duplicate that effort uh, April the big uh, number came from this other landscaping job but it looks like it was a one-time deal could we go back to that customer and see if there's more we could do for that customer? Things like that that the client may not be seeing when you just give them a P&L balance sheet and, and you probably don't even give them a statement of cash flows because most of them won't understand it. So keep in mind, I'm not suggesting that you do a report like this and just send it to the client. The client's going to be all the more lost. What I'm suggesting is that you do an analysis like this, which as you can see, very easy to do. I've done it in less than 20 minutes while I was explaining it. Imagine how much more quickly you can do it when you're not taking the time to explain. But I can do an analysis like, analysis like this and get on the phone with a customer and review it, even if it means spending one more hour of your time on that engagement to go over this and some other reports that I'm going to identify in the coming weeks. Go over these things with your client. Their perceived value of what you're giving them, so well, so far above and beyond a simple tax return, is going to make them so loyal to you. And you can easily, I think, justify probably increasing your rates. And the clients will be only too happy to pay it because now they're getting the feeling, which is what I sense from the clients that come in my door, is lacking in many cases. They're getting the feeling that now that you've done your, their tax return, you've had a good look under the hood at their business. Do do, do the right thing by them, which is, I'm just speaking from their perspective, do the right thing. Tell them, hey, now that I've had a look under the hood, I've had a good look at your business and what's going on there, here are some things I see. Here are some things you might want to take a look at. Give them that guidance and that advice. That's what they're looking for from you. Every single client of mine that walks in the door, every single time they tell me they're thinking of switching to a different CPA, Every single time I ask them why, that's the reason. Without exception, that is the reason. I'm not getting the guidance. All they're doing is doing my taxes and sending me a bill. And that's not enough. Clients want more from their CPAs. So as always, please post your comments below. I'd love to get your feedback. love to get your questions so I can answer them. And I'd be very happy to do a video response to your question if your question has something to do with something I can explain to you in the form of a software tutorial of any kind. Uh, so again, post your comments, your questions below. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.